Okay, guys, so this is an example of an anesthetic machine. This one is manufactured by GE and it's the gear station 650. So there are a lot of different makes and models of anesthetic machines. Um, and the goal is obviously not to get too confused, but all anesthetic machines have got the same features on them. So obviously you must try and recognize um, the specific features um, that they all must have. All right, so the purposes of the anesthetic machine is to ventilate the patient, to administer our inhalation or gases, and to monitor the patient. There are things that must connect to the back of the machine. So obviously you need power, the machine needs power. So you'll have a big power cord that usually connects into the power plug, all right? Then you also need to make sure that if the power fails, that you will have backup. And the anesthetic machines all have backup batteries. So in the morning when we check the machines, we should switch off the power to make sure that the battery of the anesthetic machine is charged and working. And then you need a supply of gases to the anesthetic machine. So we've got all our pipeline gases here and you'll see that they are all color coded and that they all have a specific shape or diameter to ensure correct connection of the um, pipelines into the right hole. And that is actually called the diameter index safety system or DIS. You can see that your medical air is marked in the colors of black and white. It's marked as air or lucht. And it's got the diameter index of a half circle or a semicircle. Okay, here you see your vacuum or your suction. Okay, it's in yellow and the diameter index is a square. If you look at oxygen, oxygen is white and it's got a shape of a hexagon in the connection that you can see more clearly here in this open oxygen port. Then you also have your nitrous oxide, it's this blue color and the connection is a circle. Um, the one other connection that's anesthetic specific is your scavenging connection. I'm just going to come around here, you'll see there's scavenging, it's a fancy word, it basically means the exhaust pipe of the anesthetic machine. That's where all the excess gases, anesthetic gases, gets vented into the atmosphere up onto the roof of theatre so that we don't pollute the theatre atmosphere. Okay, so basically the exhaust pipe of the anesthetic machine. You'll see there's one more connection here, it stands for high pressure air. That I don't mention specifically really, don't worry about the shape. This is for the orthopedics um, or drills that they use to drill. Um, so this is for the orthopedic purposes. Okay. And as you follow out this exhaust pipe, you will see that the exhaust pipe comes all the way here and it's connected here. So that's basically the exhaust pipe of the machine. The other thing that must be at the back of the machine is a backup in case your main oxygen fails. And that is your oxygen cylinder that is here inside that is marked oxygen. It must be present on the, on the anesthetic machine and we must check that there's enough oxygen in there. So that in case our main oxygen fails, we have a backup. Some machines do have nitrous oxide cylinders as well, but that's obviously not a must, it's just a bonus. All right, you'll see here where the pipelines come and connect into the anesthetic machine, it's also clearly marked oxygen, nitrous oxide, and air there at the bottom. Okay, if you come around, you will see there are certain things that must connect from the anesthetic machine to the patient. That obviously includes all your monitoring equipment, yeah, and the basics would be your ECG, your pulse oximeter and your blood pressure all right and that must go and connect to the patient all right then obviously you have your breathing circuit now the breathing circuit consists of two separate limbs and i'm going to show you to you so you'll see here's the two separate limbs of the breathing circuit okay you have an inspiratory limb that's indicated by the arrow pointing towards the patient inspiration and then a limb that has an arrow that I just want to show you guys is over there. So that is the expiratory limb or the air that go, is expired by the patient going back into the machine. All right, so two limbs of the breathing circuit. And as you follow it out, you see that it connects here eventually at the Y connector. We've got a little extension here. And then prior to the mask, we always have a filter attached. This is called an HME filter or the heat and moisture um, filter. So what it does is this filter actually, number one, prevents bacteria from the patient to contaminate the machine, 
but number two, it captures the heat and moisture that escapes from the patient's airway, traps it in here so that with the next breath, it gives that heat and moisture back to the patient because as you can appreciate, when you have intubated a patient, you bypass the body's normal airway and, the, and you have to heat and humidify the gases that you give to the patient because by intubating the patient, the trachea can't, you know, your, your patient's airway can't now anymore heat and humidify the gases for the patient. Um, as we all do when we breathe in and out, is that our, the air or the oxygen gets heat, heated and humidified by our airways. So that filter does that job for us. All right. Okay. Um, you will see another little line attached to the filter. This is called the sample line. So the sample line goes all the way back into the machine you'll see here it goes and then it's connected here at the back all right this is just a water trap that traps any, traps any excess water but this sample line actually continuously samples gas from the breathing circuit and it gives us the following values you'll see here on the on the machine it's telling you here well obviously there's no values now because there's not a patient connected and no gases are turned on but that sampling line that is basically connected to the gas analyzer that now gives us all this information about nitrous oxide going in so fi and n title going out anesthetic agent so if you're using iso this will become purple if you're using sevo yellow and so forth what's going in and coming out it will also give you the oxygen information as well and then as well it will give you the capnography information which should be over here you'll see the co2 so when you breathe it will give a waveform and i can maybe just quickly demonstrate by blowing into the sample line and you'll see there your co2 coming okay so it's giving you the information on capnography as well all right so this little sample line gives you all the information about all the gases going in and out of the patient it will give you the values there and the co2 it will also give you in a waveform and giving you the information about the co2 going in and the co2 coming out all right okay the anesthetic machines usually have at least two screens sorry about that one screen at the top is usually to show you all the monitoring information about the patient the bottom screen is usually to give you information about the ventilation of the patient, airway pressures and so forth. And usually also you can see there at the bottom we can set our ventilation parameters. Okay. All right. So, okay. So that's talking about that sampling line. It's obviously then connected to the mask. Okay. So if we come back towards the machine, you'll see at the bottom is our soda line. Okay. You might see it's got a little bit of a purple color. The soda lime granules absorbs the expired CO2 from the patient and traps it here. Okay, a chemical reaction happens inside that turns the granules purple once they've absorbed the CO2 and that reaction also uh, releases heat and releases water. Okay, why do we need this? Well, we save money. Okay, because oxygen and the anesthetic agent and the nitrous oxide, everything can be recycled and used again by the patient you know because it's we use a closed circuit so everything can be recycled and used again by the patient but co2 as you know should not be inspired by the patient so we need to take that out of this closed circuit system and then we can recycle the other gases so as long as we take out the co2 then we are saving money because we can use low flows of our gases and save money this way because we are removing the CO2, we can use low flows. Before they had this fancy canister, they had to use very high flows of oxygen and, and air to actually just manually wash out the CO2, but now we can use low flows because we have something that traps the CO2. Okay, if the soda alarm is exhausted, so it's done its job and needs to be replaced, it usually has turned completely purple. You can also feel that it's quite cold if it's exhausted while you have a patient connected onto the breathing circuit. If it's not working anymore, it will feel actually cold because it won't release heat anymore. Um, and also you will start seeing inspiratory CO2 on your capnograph. So that's the ways that you know that the soda line are exhausted. Up here you see the bellows of the ventilator. 
So obviously marked on the side, this one will move from um, the top down to the bottom depending on what you've set, so what is your tidal volume. But this is the bellows that will move up and down as you ventilate the patient. Here is the switch that you choose to switch be between two options. Either the patient is being ventilated by the ventilator or if you choose that option, either the patient here must be breathing spontaneously or you will need to hand bag or bag mask ventilate them. Um, and it's just fallen to the floor here. But here obviously as you can see there's another picture of the bag because here is the limb that connects to the breathing bag. Okay. All right, here is your APL valve. Now, APL stands for Adjustable Pressure Limiting Valve. Let me just put this thing on standby, otherwise it's going to keep alarming at us. No, it doesn't want me to do that. There we go. Okay, so the APL valve stands for Adjustable Pressure Limiting Valve. So, the Adjustable Pressure Limiting Valve is a way that we can administer positive pressure ventilation to our patients because i'm just busy teaching a class online sorry so um so this is a way that we need can positive pressure ventilate our patients okay because remember if we are breathing spontaneously we are breathing with negative pressure but if we want to breathe for someone we need to ventilate them with positive pressure Okay, so we need to put positive pressure into the system to be able to positive pressure ventilate the patient. Okay, so this APL valve is only used when you are in this setting. Okay, when you have to bag mask ventilate the patient. Then you have to adjust this, so you put a positive pressure into the breathing circuit. So here we choose a positive pressure of 20 centimeters of water. And now when we bag the bag, we will be able to positive pressure ventilate the patient. Okay, if we are not aware of this and we leave this on zero or minimum, and you now try and bag mask ventilate the patient, you will be unable to. So remember, you need to put positive pressure into the system so that you can positive pressure ventilate the patient. So remember, you are trying to inflate the lungs that are like balloons. Okay, so. Um, you have to put this, uh, this on, onto a setting or choose a positive pressure if you want positive pressure ventilated patient. Again, if the patient is breathing spontaneously, obviously you don't need to put anything on there. The patient will just breathe spontaneously. But as soon as you paralyze someone, you do need to put a value in here. And we usually... Guys, I'm trying to teach you making noise. Can I just finish and then you can continue? Okay, so if you choose a pressure of 20 centimeters of water, then you can pressurize the breathing circuit with 20 centimeters of water and you are able to positive pressure to ventilate your patient. All right, we usually use a value of not more than 20 centimeters of water because your lower esophageal sphincter tone is about 20 centimeters of water. So if you go higher than that, you're going to overcome the tone of your lower gastroesophageal sphincter and you are going to inflate the stomach more. Okay. So that's why we, when we are bag mask ventilating, we try and keep this value at or below 20 centimeters of water. Once the patient is intubated and you've got a secure airway, you can go higher if you need to. Obviously with higher values, it could potentially damage the lungs. But that value of 20 centimeters of water that we talk about refers to bag mask ventilating the patient and keeping the value below 20 centimeters of water because you don't want to inflate the stomach too much okay if you are in this setting the ventilator is ventilating the patient so it doesn't matter what you do there it's a completely different circuit now that you're using okay so again IPL valve is being used when you are in the manual setting okay so here on the side you will see that there's an extra way to give oxygen to the patient okay so if you open the oxygen here you've got oxygen coming out of there and you can attach an ambi bag there or nasal prongs or face mask okay so it's just an extra way of giving oxygen to the patient switch this thing up again good all right then you will see that there's a, a an extra sign here for auxiliary common gas outlet that's what that stands for I wouldn't worry too much about it for you guys purposes but basically what it means 
if you are in this setting you are on the normal setting where you know you, you you have these two options and this will be your breathing circuit uh, but you can also choose to flip the switch then this becomes your common gas outlet and then you actually have to attach your breathing circuit here we use it exclusively usually for kids and we, uh, we uh, attach our Jackson Reese our TPs here um, because it's just a smaller breathing circuit it doesn't have so much dead space or so much resistance for the kids so this setting on this setup is specific specifically for the induction of children weighing less than 20 kilograms okay so putting it back on that side switches it back to the normal mode of the anesthetic machine okay here we have our vaporizers and you'll see we've got two we've got the yellow sevoflurane and the purple isoflurane right and here on the side you'll see the percentages that you can choose again if you remember the whole thing about mac um, you know that you want to know what the end title value is at equilibrium in other words what is the patient breathing out because that that will closely resemble what is going on in the brain and that is the actual value we are looking at so setting a value of two percent for sevoflurane here doesn't mean that that is what is going on in the brain you have to keep an eye on the value of the end title to know what your map actually is okay but here's the percentage obviously you can see it goes higher because initially because you want to fill all the compartments the lungs the blood and the brain you will initially give more and then gradually come down as you get saturation of your compartments and here you'll see your eyes are, which is the purple one as you can see you can't open two vaporizers at the same time that's a safety feature okay and here's where you open because the gas is all come in a liquid form you'll see there's the liquid gas in there on top of it sits the vapor and when i adjust the percentage here it adjusts the amount of carrier gas that goes through the vaporizer to pick up the vapor that's sitting on top of the liquid there okay Here's my gas control knobs, okay, you'll see that the oxygen is marked oxygen, it's bigger, it's on the right hand side, and it's got the special fluted shape, right, nitrous is blue, um, and air is this black and white, alright, and you'll see the values change there as you open it. With nitrous oxide, there's an added safety feature, because if you just give nitrous oxide, a patient will die, isn't it? But you see, as I open the nitrous, the oxygen is automatically opening up. So it's to safeguard me killing a patient by just giving nitrous oxide by mistake. If I close the oxygen, you'll see the nitrous oxide will also start closing as a safety measure. Okay. All right. Um, we've talked about that. Big